Here, I'm going to demonstrate a transition with, with three sides slanted or sloping. First of all, it all starts with a, a sketch of the fitting you would like to build. In this case, I'm going to call that piece the bottom piece. It has zero slope, also called flat on bottom. This piece will be the top cheek, and we see it has a four inch slope. It can also be called top down four inches. This one is going to be the long side because it's the longest of all the pieces. It has a six inch slope. And the other one is the short side. It has a three inch slope. There are four pieces to this fitting. Now let's go ahead and find the cut sizes. We can see that the fitting wants to be 14 inches finished. We know the slopes for every piece. The top was four, the bottom zero, the long side six, and the short side three. So the formula is fitting length squared plus slope squared square root that number. And here are my cut sizes. Let's go to the shear and cut all four pieces. Now that I have my four pieces on the bench, I'm gonna pick one that I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna start with the one that has zero slope, which is my flat on bottom. So basically, it will look like my sketch. I'm gonna locate my S and drives, and they go on these ends. I have chosen to put a snap lock so I'm allowing a half inch for the male part of the snap lock. And now I will describe the one inch working line for my S and drives. Now I will start adding my duct opening dimensions. On this end, I have eight inches. On the other end, it will be five. I'm now gonna to scribe to connect the dots and add a half inch on both sides for my male snap lock. I'm now going to repeat the same process with my top cheek. The only difference is my top cheek is 5 eighths of an inch longer 
because of its four inch slope. Now I'll be grabbing the side pieces. I have chosen the longer one. Therefore, that is the long side, which is 16 and 5 16 This is the end where my S and drives are gonna be going. This is the one inch working line. And then I'm gonna add an inch and a quarter for the female portion of our snap lock. I am now adding the duct opening dimension, which is 10. And on the other end is six. I will need to add an inch and a quarter to that scribed line. There, the long side is laid out. I'm now just writing some of the info required or maybe needed for some people that aren't 100% sure of what end is the locks or the seams or the connectors. If you do happen to mark on your fittings, try to keep the markings on the inside and as neat as possible. Now that we've finished laying out the long side, I'm gonna go ahead and do the short side. The short side is identical to the long side. The short side simply measures a bit less. It's 15 and 3 eighths long, 
and that's because it has a three inch slope, not a six inch. Now that all my allowances and connectors are scribed, I'm gonna go ahead and notch every corner. I will now make my way to the snap lock machine. Now, be careful that you are looking at the inside of the fitting when running through the machine. It is very easy to make a mistake and put the locks on the wrong side. And you will have to start over again, believe me. Now you will see me you will see me using the brake or I could have gone to the bar folder or any other machine in the shop to bend every piece that is sloping should be kinked at the one inch working line this will allow the S cleat to go on properly and the amount of kink always depends on the amount of slope that was happening on that piece it will take a bit of practice to get used to how much kinking is going on each side. Now that that's done, I will put, bend my drive cleats. And in most cases, don't forget, the drive cleats go on the short side of the duct. Now that everything is formed properly, we are ready to assemble. 